power in the name of Jesus. How many feel that power alive in here today? Woo. How many of you know that it is a special day today? It's Pentecost Sunday. Am I in a Pentecostal church? Wait, am I in a Pentecostal church? Yeah. Told somebody one time, you could fall dead in our services and we wouldn't find you till it was over. It's the truth anyhow. Amen, amen, amen. I, I'm thankful to be Pentecostal. I'm thankful that I'm full of the Holy Ghost, that I'm alive. I'm no longer dead, but I'm alive in Him. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about this day and the celebration of Pentecost Sunday. Do you all have any more that you're going to do this morning? We ready for the Word? Amen. Ready for the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. If you could hit the house lights, I like to see your faces. I like to see who I'm preaching to. These lights up here are bright, and all I can see is just myself and no faces, and it's like I'm preaching to a blob. But I, I have a feeling today that the Lord's going to move in a mighty way. Anybody ready for the Holy Ghost to continue to move in a mighty way today? Whoever's back there, if you could hit the house lights, that would be great. Just my preference. You know that the enemy comes in any way that he can to distract, right? So I don't know about you, but I have found that even in my worship time, I can get distracted. But you know what? I'm going to clear all distractions out of here today because I know God's given me an anointed word to preach to you today because it's Pentecost. And if I, if I looked at the sign right, and if I came into the right place, then I'm able to preach to a lot of Holy Ghost-filled people today that are excited about Jesus, that are full of the Holy Ghost, that are on fire for Him. And I want to thank you this morning that, that you freely get up here and worship. That we're not having to drag you up here, but that, that you're excited to come worship your King. You know, if you're not excited about worshiping down here, I don't know what you're going to do in heaven. I don't think you're going to sit around and say, I just don't feel like worshiping you today, Jesus. I'm tired. No, because we're not going to be tired in heaven. No more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow. I think we're going to be filled to the uttermost and, and have all the energy we need to praise Him. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Bell's Chapel Assembly of God this morning. I see some guests out here today. Our pastor is on vacation. I'm the associate pastor for those that are here today. Things are a little bit different. We made it through this morning. And, and how many know that we're a church body and that we're thankful for our leader, but we're praying for him for rest as he, he, he rests and refills himself up? And I'm excited today that we could come and gather together and that I have the honor to be able to bring you the word on this Pentecost Sunday because I feel a fire inside of me. You see, you can't argue with an experience. Back in 1998, God baptized me with the power of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and I've never been the same. I've never been the same. And I don't know about you, but once you have an experience, nobody can take that away from you. Amen. So we're Pentecostal. Well, what does that mean? Well, what you're Pentecostal, it means that we identify and we seek after the fullness of His Spirit just as they did at Pentecost. At Pentecost. We're going to focus on that today, and we're going to go to the book of Acts. If you want to turn with me, the book of Acts chapter 1 is where we're going to start out today. How many of you like the book of Acts and the infilling of the Holy Ghost? Woo, I do. I love it keeps me alive. It keeps me on fire. It keeps me going. When I'm weak, he is strong because he abides in me. So many times we forget, church, that our heart is Christ's home. He abides in us. He lives in us. He lives here. And how we walk and how we talk and how we have our being and how we breathe and how we're able to come up to the front and lift up our hands, it's because his life is inside of us. We take that for granted so many times, just having the breath of life to be able to worship. You see, my little girl was struggling last night to breathe. She was having some respiratory issues, and I had to put a heavy dose of oxygen on her, and it reminded me how thankful I am for the breath of life that God breathes into me, that I'm not struggling today to feel that, that flow of His breath blowing through me. You see, I couldn't talk without Him. I couldn't walk without Him. I couldn't do anything without Him. Because in myself, I'm nothing, but in Him, I'm everything. Amen. But church, I believe today more than ever before 
I believe that we need a harvest of the Spirit of, our, of God in our lives once again. We need a harvest of Pentecost. As witnesses, we cannot afford to stop seeking to be filled with His power. We can't do it. As the church, we cannot afford to remain the same. We can't. Complacency and mediocrity, that's where the world wants us to stay. But God wants us to be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. He wants us ever growing and changing and filled to the uttermost so we can pour it out onto other people. And as his children, we must be unified in the faith. We need to be unified so we can have the immediate presence and the glory of all he has. And I, I, my husband and I were talking the past two weeks. It's been different around here, hasn't it? The worship has been different. The freedom has been different. And I just want to tell you, some people aren't going to understand it. They're going to say, well, I don't, I don't get all that. Well, listen, we've not come here today. If you've come to be entertained, you've come to the wrong place. But if you've come to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you're at the right place at the right time today. So you see, why is Pentecost so important today? Why, why, why? We're going to go to the Word and see. We're going to start in Acts chapter 1. We're going to be reading uh, verses 5 through 8. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they were therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Verse 8, But ye shall receive power. Do you hear me? Power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. I don't know about you, but the power of the Holy Ghost sustains me. It keeps me alive. And as a little child, we used to sing a song, it's keeping me alive. It's like fire shut up in my bones. If you're not feeling the fire of the Holy Ghost in your life, today's your day to rekindle that fire. Today is your day to rekindle that fire. You see, the power of the Holy Ghost not only gives us boldness to witness, but it gives us the ability to represent Christ in a mighty way. It gives us the ability to walk right, to talk right, to live right, to have the peace and comfort. You see, he didn't go away to leave us comfortless. He went away and sent his spirit back to us. So he said, so you can live a, a life of boldness and of power and of strength. You see, because in ourselves we're going to get weak. Anybody ever feel weak? God, I can't do it. It's too much. And just like that tongue and interpretation, we take the things of the world on, and in ourself, we, we become in bondage and in slavery. But, oh, friend, when the Holy Ghost gets to moving inside of you, and you get that fire of the living king oh, in your belly, I can feel it from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, and it's like fire shut up in my bones. You can't stand still. It's kind of like you plugged into 220. And I don't know if you've ever sh shouted a little Pentecostal jig. I said that to one time to a friend. I said, whoo, I shouted me a Pentecostal jig. She said, what is that? I said, well, I can't do it in the flesh. But you get the spirit on me, and it's different. You know, the spirit can be on you. Oh, but when it gets in you, friend, you get to move, and you can't stand still, and you might act just a little bit because his spirit is alive and well in you. But I want to focus on a few things today, why it's important. Why is Pentecost important? Three things today for fulfillment, for fire, and for feeling. You see, the fulfillment was that we would have a power, a supernatural power to face every storm, sorrow, and situation that would happen in life. You, knew, you know, Christ knew. He knew that believers would be starting the New Testament church and they'd be facing many storms. I don't know about you, but not every storm's in the forecast. I'm glad, glad I have the Holy Ghost radar that I'm prayed up before the storm happens. That I can pray that storm away before it comes. When I see it coming, I can speak the name of Jesus and declare it to be removed in Jesus' name. You see, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You can receive power from the Holy Ghost. Power. Friend, let me tell you today, if you're here, and I know you are, and I know from the tongue and interpretation that God is wanting to speak to his people today, that if you're in bondage, if you don't have peace, if you don't have joy, if you don't have the comfort of the Holy Ghost living and abiding in you, it can come alive today. 
You see, what better day to be born of the Spirit than Pentecost Sunday? You see, I'll never forget the day that I threw my hands up in full surrender. I had no idea what was happening to me, but I had an experience with the Holy Ghost. I had it come on me, and I began to speak in another tongue as the Spirit gave utterance. And I turned and looked and said, what just happened to me? And my friend said, you just got filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, I did what? I'd never heard of anything like it. I'd heard of it as a child, but I had never experienced the power of the Holy Ghost. You see, I could talk to you all day long what it's like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, but until you have an encounter personally yourself, you'll never get it. You'll never understand. The desire for God's desire for you is to be filled. Number one, for a fulfillment, as a fire. Scripture says here that it was as a, as a fire. We're going to jump over to verse Chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, or yes, 4. Hang with me. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, just like we are right now. And suddenly, anybody need a suddenly in their life? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. It didn't just fill the left side. It didn't just fill the right side. It filled all the house, all the house. I want all you to get on board, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them as, wait, let me back up. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As a fire, as a fire, a consuming fire, church the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to keep you burning. It's going to keep you burning. Why was there a symbol of fire when the believers received the Holy Ghost? You see, fire is a symbol of transformation. It's a symbol of transformation. Fire changes whatever it touches, right? Some ways that the Holy Ghost works to transform us is the religious leaders, listen to this, the religious leaders, the tax collectors, and various family members of Jesus and their disciples, they were all touched and filled with the Holy Ghost. They were formed into a united group, just kind of like we are here right now. And, and you see what happens is we want the fire of the Holy Ghost to move and consume us, but, but we're not in one accord in unity of the faith. You see, miracles and wonders are going to happen when we all come in the unity of the faith, in one mind, in one accord, and then boom, it suddenly is going to happen. It's going to change us. But you see, before Pentecost, the disciples, they were scared. Anybody ever say, ooh, what are they doing? That loud yell and that, ho, oh, ha, ha, that's a little scary. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I remember having a lady saying, if you got to do that to be a Christian, I don't want to do it. Well, I've said it too. Come on. You don't understand it. See, before Pentecost, they were scared. They lacked faith. They did not fully understand God's plan. But, oh, church, after the Pentecostal fire fell, after after, you see, they had an experience. They were transformed and united together as never before. You see, nothing, nothing earlier had welded them into one united force. But it took, it took the fire of God's Spirit, the fire of the Holy Ghost. You say, what do you mean the fire? That transforming thing that, that burns all those fleshly, carnal things out of you. That consuming fire that you say, oh, Jesus, I'm in love with you from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. There's nothing in my flesh that wants this world. Give me silver or gold. I want Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. But church... To see the miracles, to see the signs and the wonders as Brother John works freely in these altars and others that are gifted in, in, in the prophetic ministry like that, we have to come in one accord. But you see what happens is it, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to get all minds thinking the same way. Because I'm sure some of you are thinking about your lunch in the crock pot at home. You're, you're clipping your nails. I can see. I'm not dumb. <laughs> um. You know, it, it's hard to get that unity of the faith. That one mind. Oh, church, but if we could get it today. That one mind and one accord that suddenly 
suddenly the Holy Ghost fire would come in and we would be consumed and transformed by his power. God's spirit is alive and working here today. Does anybody else feel it besides me? It's as a fire. It's as a fire. The New Testament believers, they had a fire that made a difference in their witness for Christ. And I don't know about you, but I want to be the best witness I can be. I want to be bold in the Holy Ghost. I want to be confident in who I am in Christ. I want to speak to that mountain and say, be ye removed in the name of Jesus. I don't want that mountain overtaking me. But what we do, church, sometimes we forget what we're equipped with. We forget that God equipped us with boldness, that he equipped us with peace, that he equipped us with righteousness and holiness. And we let our flesh start speaking. And we think, oh, well, this feels good. This feels good to my flesh, right? Is it aligning with the word of God? Is it aligning with the word of God? Because see, I'm going to tell you something. You better be careful when you ask God for the Holy Ghost because you're going to start living with conviction. And let me tell you, the conviction of the Holy Ghost is your very best friend. It will lead you. It will guide you. It will transform you. It will. But only if you let it. Because your flesh will override the Holy Ghost that quick. Have you ever had the Lord deal with you about something and say, mm, don't wear that. That's too low. Well, it looks good. Come on, women. It looks good. I, I look good. I've lost some weight. Cover up. Cover up. Be modest and holy. Be modest and holy. Don't do things the world's doing. If the world's doing, run. The Holy Ghost is going to make you live right. It's going to make your house right. It's going to make you do the things that, that line up with the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, Pastor and I have been talking for the past few weeks, and if we really think it's the end times, and I, then we better start preaching people right into a little hot, a little fire. Because you're not, I'm sorry, but, you know, if you could just wink at God and get into heaven, you know, that'd be all great and dandy, but I don't believe that's what the Word says. Not everybody, you know, you can't live wrong and die right. But the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost it's for a feeling. It was a fulfillment. It was for as a fire and as a feeling. You see, we're able <clears throat> to be a testimony. We're able to be a, tes a living testimony of what the power of God can do in me and you. You see, since I had an experience in 1998, I began to mature in my walk with Christ. You see, if you're not praying in the Spirit regularly and you are not getting in tune with the fire and the presence, you're really not growing and changing. Because what happens is we start getting back to that heavenly little check mark. Well, I went, well, I went to Bible study Wednesday too. Whoopee. What are you grow, what, what's growing in you? What's growing in you? Because if the Holy Ghost fire is not burning in you, in the name of Jesus, and it roll out. Not that you walk around speaking in tongues like a crazy person all the time, but I'm saying being obedient to the Spirit, walking in the Spirit so you're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. When you're walking with Jesus and you have a relationship with Him, you're going to be a living testimony. You're going to be a walking testimony, and you will be able to preach the gospel and use words when necessary. Preach the gospel, use words when necessary. That means how you live your life is your testimony. <clears throat> the feeling of the Holy Ghost today, church, God's coming soon. He is coming soon. He is coming after a church without spot or blemish. He's coming for us, and we want to be ready. And my prayer is that if there be anything within me, that is not lining up with his word, that's fleshly, that's worldly, that's not a witness for him, take it out. We have to have that repentant heart and say, God, I confess and forsake. You see, we can come to the altar and say, God, fill me with a Holy Ghost. But it's not going to do you any good if you've not repented, confessed, and forsaken that sin. Because we've got to get the old out to put the new in. The new birth, the new birth is being born of the Spirit. You say, well, what does that mean? Being spirit. You know, when, when you're a baby, you talk like a little baby, right? I want to share something with you. When I first got filled with the Holy Ghost, 
I said a few little words like a little baby. Da, 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 da. I don't even know what I said. It's a few little syllables. But as I grew, as I grew in my relationship with Christ, it became a little more fluent. I said maybe just a few more words, kind of like a baby does. And I began to mature, and I thought, man, I'm praying in the Spirit a little longer. And it's, it's becoming easier. But there was a time, hear my heart on this, there was a time, and you can ask my husband, that we would go to camp meeting after camp meeting after camp meeting, and I could not speak in tongues. I know that's hard to believe, but I would leave the camp meetings bawling my eyes out, saying, what's wrong with me? I can't speak in tongues. Everybody's getting filled and carrying on, and I'm just sitting there like, why can't I feel it? Maybe that's you today. I don't understand it. Listen, it's not about the tongues, okay? That's the evidence that you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, okay? So when somebody says, have you ever had the Holy Ghost? Have you had the Holy Ghost fire? You're like, what do you mean? It's not about the tongues. Get your mind. That's where I went wrong. You're going to learn something today. Here's a little wisdom. I was focusing on the tongues and not focusing on the cross of Calvary, the cross of Jesus, what he did for me. I was focusing on that manifestation, and therefore my mind, I was overthinking it. And see, what happens is, is when you're seeking the Holy Ghost, when you start to overthink it like, oh, that don't sound right. That didn't sound like Brother uh, Gary did, and oh, that ain't right. Then you start thinking, this, this isn't real. This, anybody, come on. The devil makes you doubt that was you. You made it up. If anybody tries to teach you, teach you how to speak in tongues, run. That is not of God. That is not something that is right. When God fills you, and this is going to happen today because it's fire in here. I feel it. When God fills you with the Holy Ghost, here's some precautionary things. It's going to feel like a fire. Now, it may not feel, look or feel or sound or anything like anybody else, but he's going to fill you the way that, that he wants to fill you. But I can tell you this today. If you will just get your mind on Jesus and say, God, I don't care what it sounds like. If I fall down, if I shake, if I just stand here. I just want the all-consuming fire of your spirit to transform me from the inside out. If you will do that today, friend, God will fill you to the uttermost. It will be an overflowing fountain that's keeping you alive. There's several, several. You can go all through the book of Acts. All through. I mean, there is a million, million places in the book of Acts. People were filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, Instance after instance after instance. If you look over in Acts chapter 8, I want to read to you um, about Saul here. It says, I'm going to start in verse 12. It says, But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. Listen at this. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, Behold, the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter, who when they were come down, prayed for them. Listen, who come, they were come down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. It says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they that were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then it says, then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So many instances in the Bible here, but the laying on of hands, it's not the hands that save you. It's not the hands that fill you. It's the obedience to the Word of God and His Spirit that enters into you that will top of your head to the soles of your feet. This day and age that we live in, listen, I don't know if you turn on the news. I don't know if you read the paper. I don't know what is. But I'm going to tell you right now that I don't want to live a day without the Holy Ghost active and alive in me. The Holy Ghost is going to keep me prepared for his, watching, for his coming. It's going to keep me watching, prepared. It's going to keep me ready. It's going to keep me prayed up. It's going to keep me from sin. It's going to give me strength. Because I can promise you, I don't know about you, but every day that I wake up, I don't just feel full of fire and, woo, let's go. I don't. But I know that that fire is in there. And it may be a little ember that just needs something blown on it just a little bit to help it get going again. And maybe that's where some of you are today. Maybe, maybe you were filled with the Holy Ghost a long time ago. And it's been a long time since you've had a refilling. Or maybe 
Maybe you have never experienced the power of Pentecost and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Well, let me tell you, the Bible says it's a gift. In Acts 2 and 39, it says this, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, as many as the Lord sh- thy God shall call. It's not just for the older generation. Because you know what? I've seen little Brookie. She, how old is she? Five? Five years old, filled with the Holy Ghost up here. Do you, I don't know about y'all, but when I see her up here, laid out, speaking in tongues, you can't tell me that the Spirit isn't active and alive and for today. If he can fill a five-year-old baby girl that's in love with Jesus, he can fill an 80, 90, 100-year-old person with the Holy Ghost. But you know what it takes? It takes an obedient heart. You see, God is not looking for your abilities, what you can do for him. He's just looking for an available heart, church. And my word today for you is this, the Pentecost fire. The Pentecost fire. It's going to sustain you. It's going to keep you burning. It's going to keep you alive. It's going to keep you making the right choices. And like I said, the more that you pray, and that may sound really elementary, but think about anything you do in life. The more that you do it, the better you get at it. The more you practice. I remember when I played ball in school, you know, we've got to practice hard. Practice makes perfect. Well, you're never going to be perfect, but I'm saying practice those. So when you begin to speak in tongues, and maybe you've been filled for the first time, or maybe you've never been filled. You may be filled and speak very fluently. I I saw a girl one time that got filled with the Holy Ghost for the very first time. She had no idea, had never even heard of the Holy Ghost. And it was on 9-11. I'll never forget it. We were at my salon, and the the towers got hit. She came running down into my room, and she said, I'm going to die and go to hell. What do I do? And I was like, calm down. She's like, no, I'm not saved. I prayed with her right there in the salon. She lifted her hands up just to, just to surrender to God right there in the salon. And God filled her with the Holy Ghost. She began to speak in fluent tongues. And she had her eyes wide open and was terrified. And she said, what is happening to me? What's happening? I mean, just da, 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 da. I have never in my life seen anything like it. And I'm sitting there like this. I mean, I'm talking fluent tongues like Brother Wire tongues. I, I've never seen anything like it. But you know what? She didn't question it. She had no idea what was happening. She was just hungry for Jesus. She was hungry for Jesus. Sometimes I think the less we know, it's better. You know, we get all these biblical scholars, and, and, and hear my heart on this, but I, I spoke on this last week or the week before, but... You know, we get all these biblical scholars sometimes, and they know so much knowledge of the Word, and, and thou shalt this and that. And it's all about just the, the religious aspect of it, the, the theological aspect of it. And, I, you know, I'll never forget, like I said, you can't argue with an experience, but stories relate to people. People understand, hey, I've had an experience too. But I was in my salon one time, and, and a lady, I was doing her hair, And she said to me, um, it was just when I took this associate pastor position, she said, well, um, where is your uh, degree from? I said, the Holy Ghost. And she said, well, you're not just like this. She said, well, you can't preach the gospel if you're not carrying a card. Just real. And I grabbed my Bible. I said, really? Show me that in the Bible. I said, I believe that every one of us are called to be witnesses for Christ. We don't have to have a card in our pocket. We have to be filled with the Holy Ghost and be bold enough to speak His Word. And I let her know very clearly that I wasn't about all that religious nonsense. And God wants you to know today that maybe you are sitting here and you're like, well, I'm not even qualified. I I couldn't get the Holy Ghost. I mean, that's great for Sister Vicki, but I couldn't get it. No. Scripture plainly says it's for everybody. It's for everybody. And if you have a desire today, as the musicians will come, if you have a desire today on this Pentecost Sunday, if you have a desire, if there's anything within you that says, you know what, it's been a little while since I've spoken in tongues. You know, that did happen about 10 years ago, and I've never felt it since. Or, Or I've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, but that sounds like a gift I want. Let me tell you, it's a gift that God wants you to have. Or maybe today you're going through something, like I said, a storm. 
And you need the fire alive in you so the boldness of his word can come out of you. That you can speak to the situation. You see, I don't wake up every morning and say, I am so excited to go crush 10 pills, go calf my little girl, pick 100 pounds up and run through the house. I don't wake up excited about that, guys. I'm just be real. I'm thankful that I have her. But it's an everyday struggle. It's exhausting physically. Can I be real with you for a minute? It's exhausting physically. Oh, but that fire in me. When I feel weak, I say, Jesus! (laughs) Oh, pick her up for me. I can't do it. Mom is tired. And you know what? I feel that strength rising up in me. Like fire shut up in my bones. And I say, in the name of Jesus, I'll carry her. I'll take care of her because I'm equipped with his spirit and strength. And you know what I began to do? (laughs) I go pick that baby girl up and I feel strength coming up in my hands, in my arms. And I say, God, you gave her to me. And you're going to strengthen me by the power of the Holy Ghost that's abiding in me. And I begin to pray in tongues. And I say, oh, and I feel his strength come up in me. And he helps me. He strengthens me. Your life is not my life. But I can tell you this. We all have battles, but we all have the same solution. And all have the same Holy Ghost. The all, we all have the same Holy Ghost. God is no respecter of persons. There's no big eyes or little U's around Calvary. And if you're hungry for Jesus today, I dare you to jump up here right now. Run up here and throw your hands up. And God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Because we're not going to leave here the same way that we came. We're going to be transformed by the power and the renewing of His Spirit. No man can do that for you. But I know a man. His name's Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross of Calvary. He washed you in his blood. So you could be free. So you could be free of sorrow and pain and sickness. And you could live a life of joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Would you stand with me all over this place today and throw your hands up? And if you're hungry for an encounter with Jesus, make your way to these altars. Come on, I know you're here. If you're hungry for Jesus...